do, and we left it in a state of muscle, a, a muscular uh, development occurred as a result of that. And this kind of thing can do that for all the local concerns. Uh, I would say that you know, the participatory element is essential. I think that that's where people start to feel like this is a part of my life as opposed to an observational experience, which is the definition that we're trying to get away from of decorative. It is not a decorative experience, the arts. Or elitist, by the no, way. No, it's a part of, it, 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 but you have, to, you have to demonstrate that and make sure that people actually participate. Otherwise, well, I don't a, think you're going to get there. Another uh, language shift I think we need to uh, focus on is that, uh, and I'll, I'll do it anecdotally, uh, a couple of years ago I was being uh, interviewed by a Brazilian uh, journalist who finished the interview by asking me if I could tell them what the difference between the art market in the 80s and the art market today is. And I said, yes, I can tell you exactly what the difference is. In the 80s, we still called it an art world. Now we call it an art market. Mm -hmm. And that, so that's a paradigm shift that's that interesting. needs to be, you know. Yeah. Uh, from a, but, from but a funding know. point of view, there's, a, there's another example there, and that's, it ties into how long things are there. But look at the tremendous success of Anna Winter's Fashion Night Out, for instance. The idea that that's a way to amplify things. In, I mean, right, Charlotte, are we, are we nodding? Yes. This is Arts Night Out, or something else night out, uh, depending on what you want to call it. But it really can shine a light in a way that other things can't. And it can be of economic value to the communities, which to me is trying to create a virtuous cycle should be the goal in all of this. None of it should be that it requires this constant, uh, the, to me, I picture the, the arts, the ballet, the opera, whatever it is, walking around like this. That's my picture. If there was a sculpture, this is it. What about the idea that it's the sculpture is actually a give and take. Look at New 42nd Street. That is, it is not completely self-sustaining, but those theaters are tithing the local businesses to an extent that they're, they realize the value. What the arts have done for 42nd Street is rewarded. It is not simply that they've done it and it's an over thing. That's it. That is a continuation. So, similarly, you bring the arts to a town. That town is getting an economic development bump. And there is a way to, to set that up, ideally, that that is how you sustain it for the long term, this sort of initiative, as opposed to we've got to raise the money this year again, and we go back, and maybe this one will help again. Oh, God. You know, that same thing. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I think there is a, I'm so glad you brought that up, I think there is this very odd amnesia about the impact of the, the economic impact of, the, of, of cultural institutions and, and creative, um, of work, you look at a place, you look at the city of Chicago, I mean, Mayor Daley, I mean, there are people in Chicago who just want him, he probably will be mayor for life, but they actually want him to be mayor for life. I mean, he transformed that city. He took over those theaters, he took over downtown, he built, he, he, he developed the initiative for Millennium Park. It is totally transformed, and as a result, there are industries that have moved to Chicago the whole economic um, structure of that city has changed because of that very visionary position that he took. And um, I don't understand, I, it, 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 it's, it's our problem. We have not framed the argument correctly because you see it over and over again. We were talking about the High Line in New York. I'm sure most of you have experienced it. It's a wonderful, wonderful, um, a new project that, li that lives in our city, that creates a sense of community, that brings business to the, that brings economic activity to that area. And I mean, these are just tiny little, or not Chicago isn't so tiny, but these are, these are concrete examples. And I find it absolutely mystifying that we have not been able to make this argument uh, effectively because, um, what seems to what seems to carry weight is the notion that this is elitist or decorative. Well, it's the history. And, it's the history of our country in yes. so many ways. It's a, it, there's a Puritan background. There's a natural distrust, which has been talked about over the centuries, and you know, in in, in very real terms, we coast on the rhetoric of the past too much. Uh, too many times when I'm speaking, I am quoting happily and with vigor President Kennedy, and that is what I've got. That's my 
that's what I've got. <laughs> and so I, I, I would say that you know, we have to, to reinvigorate in all these ways, but also you know, on the sides of the arts, we've resented the idea that there's a utility, that we know we shouldn't, art is for art's sake, and you know, there, there is God, there's, that is true in many ways and cases, but, but there's many ways to get to heaven. I mean, the arts do have a utility. They are, they should have an infrastructural capacity. They are infrastructure. Creativity is part of our infrastructure if we've done it right. And the way you refer to it, it's, we aren't doing it right. We're not doing it right, we're not. I mean, you look at, who is, uh, and I'll be quiet, I promise. Um, but, I mean, you look at, we don't have many heroes in society anymore. When I was young in ancient times, we had heroes. But we don't really have those anymore because they're completely, you know, investigated and knocked down by the press. Um, but oh, that's uh, but that's another subject. But um, you know, uh, I would say if I asked most young people who have any knowledge of of, of of kind of business, what is what is who is the hero? They would all say Steve Jobs. And why has Steve Jobs, or not just young people, I mean, I would say that. I would say Steve Jobs, I would say the head of Pixar. I mean, these are people who have imaginations, who have taken design and, and um, artfulness and made them into um, incredibly powerful uh, businesses. And, and they fight. And they Look at the paper today. Steve Jobs came out. What did it say? Antenna gate behind him. <laughs> <laughs> How great is that? I mean, it's just like, okay, let's turn this around and fight for it. Um, I heard uh, Ayan Harsali talk about why aren't we waging the war the same way with uh, the fundamentalist movements? Why aren't we fighting harder for hearts and minds? Why do we assume our position is correct? Well, maybe the artists have to start doing that. I, to, I, I mean, agree maybe more. we, I you mean, guys, have got to take. You're, you're doing. You've got to be out of the vanguard. Yeah. I mean, you could make an argument that Shepard Fairey and Will I Am had his, and and a few good speeches and a very attractive candidate, but those those other those artists made a huge difference in the history of this country because Absolutely. they persuaded people that this was this was the future. This was possibility. This was. I hard. didn't believe it, but. It's true. I sent Yes We Can around. We talked about YouTube earlier on the street and the power of YouTube. You can actually separate society into believers in YouTube and non-believers. People who would like are scared of YouTube. I don't want my thing on YouTube. And people who are like, share it on YouTube. Well, Yes We Can I sent around and I was stunned. I, I don't know what it says. It's a little bit of an odd commentary, but how many people came back and said, you know what? That changed my mind. Yeah. Yeah, and I said, wow. well, propaganda, but it works. Absolutely. But, and artists will have so many new tools, I think, to disseminate their ideas, their radical thinking, their new ways of thinking, and as you say, Margot, imagination, which is so core. Um, we're going to, before we turn this over to the audience, which we're going to do in two minutes, I just wanted to shift focus. One last question for the panelists. Um, we've talked a lot about the local scene here, communities, how art improves communities, the health of our nation. Um, but understanding that America's position is a very complicated one, might, might even say calamitous in the world we live in, rather than thinking locally, investing in our communities, should we as a nation be thinking more globally? Um, how do we recognize that sustaining today's culture, our culture is sustaining a global culture? I think of the projects happening in the Gulf states, American universities, museum hospitals, setting up outposts in Qatar, Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Um, is this about money, or is this about, which is you know, a way to raise money, or is that, this really about building bridges through culture? Um, I think the business world has been very effective in understanding its future lies in building markets in China, for example. But have the arts even scratched the surface of the opportunities that lie abroad and the opportunity for a more cross-cultural dialogue? Anybody? Um, hmm. This may be a little obtuse, but uh, the uh, you know one of the things that seems to historically fuel art is a dialectic, uh, a dialectical situation. Uh, uh, it's normally referred to as things like you know classical versus romantic or expressionism versus formalism, something like that. One of the things I noticed in the 
contemporary arts is that uh, whereas in the past these dialectical uh, dynamics had been um, focused on styles that um, uh, reveal these, these two uh, positions, that with the diversification, the, uh, the, the, the sort of breakdown of formalism in, in a strict sense, the uh, you know, variety of ways that we are, are creatively expressing ourselves in the arts.